G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast and make sure you check out Butts Mom Premium where you can catch another episode of the podcast just for the premium members. It's fucking amazing, it's uncensored, it's fucking cocks are out, dicks are swinging in the air, it's fucking unbelievable stuff. You will not believe what we got up to on Butts Mom Premium. No cocks are out, just... Um just buttholes. buttholes. Just buttholes this week. Buttholes this week. Doodles next week. Doodles next week. Make sure you're there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Butterfield Effect. I've got a very exciting guest on today. Uh, he's a good friend of ours, good friend of the show, good human being. I've also got Josh Nielsen. Uh, Bluey is back co-hosting the show. We've got him on Zoom. We didn't have him last week, but it's very exciting to have him here. Please, mate, welcome Bluey and the great Hello, friendly Geordies. Hello, g'day. How you doing? G'day, Isaac, and g'day, Bluey. Hello, mate, Jordan. Known you um, for, what, two minutes? Yeah, we've As been talking. Yes. Hand up guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah thank talking. you, mate. Uh, great, great, uh, great character reference there. It's a uh, <laughs> pleasure to meet you, mate. Well, that's <laughs> it. So Jordan comes into the – Friendly Geordies comes into the chat and I go, this is Josh Bluey. He's a good bloke. And you're like, hey, all right, cool. Get out. <laughs> Which is how you should act. Like, who cares? It's all good. It's not a fucking I'm glad setup. you didn't question it. I could be a real cunt, but yeah, I'm glad well, you didn't it, question it. It's good. Particularly with um, everyone out to get um, Shanksy at the moment, it's uh, – you know, do you feel like people are out to get you? Like people are trying to a bit have a bit of a gotcha moment at the moment with you? Yeah, but I've learned the secret recipe. You ready for this? It's called don't talk to the press. Yeah. That's the way that you get around it. It's such a glitch in the matrix. I think it's just if you're usually a public figure, you're always looking for some kind of promotion in one of the traditional papers and or television shows. But every time they ever come knocking to me, I just know that they're, they're looking for some way to trip me up and attack me. That's the name of the game. And I think that everybody else just takes the calculated risk of, oh, well, I've got no other way of talking to these people. But Isaac, you know what this is like. It's an amazing feeling of, oh, I don't actually need to appear on 20 to 1. 100%. You know, Absolutely. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. Could you imagine like... It's just like a you, step down a bit. It's kind of just you're collabing with nine. I've I've got a good oh. mate of mine who was on a lot of reality TV shows and uh, yeah. he he's sort of like, I'm trying to get, get him to do content online and whatever it happens to be about. He was on Married at First Sight. Ryan Gallagher's his name. And I've been yeah. into him about it. I said, mate, you got to do it. And he's like, no, no, I'm just waiting for some more traditional roles, more traditional. I was like, don't. It's a bad move. It's not, It's not. you know, the early 2000s or even the 2010s anymore. You need to be diversifying and finding a way to find your own audience rather than relying on some shit TV show that no one gives a fuck about. So, Jordan, you're saying that you've got no plans going Dancing with the Stars in the near future. Is that what we can no, sort I've of take from No, I've got plans for this? that. Don't oh, you worry. Yes. Like, if they say <laughs> yes, I'm going, that's... <laughs> I want that sparkly tux. Thank you very much. Fucking other than that, yeah. But it, virtually any other show. Honestly, though, I will say that though, Josh, I'm, I'm dead serious about that. If I was offered to go on Dancing with, the, there's some shows that are too much of a meme to not say. <laughs> yes, <you know? laughs> Dancing with the stars. Imagine the content. Imagine hey, hey, the content. Saturday. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 he just doesn't want to doesn't want to give it a go. And I said, to him, "Mate, you just got to do it. Just give it a crack. Get on there. Like, otherwise, you're going to be constantly chasing your tail, trying to get on fucking dating shows. And it's just a shit way to sort of. But he, you what? know, he's got this in his mind that it's uh, you need to be the traditional celebrity or whatever you want to call it or public figure. I was like, mate, no one cares. They're they're a dime a dozen. Yeah. That is actually really limiting yourself if you're just saying that you're going to be sitting there waiting out for scraps at Channel 7 and they'll just chuck you some little bone every now and then. And in the meantime as well, you know what I've realised? If you are going down that path, really what you have to do is strip away your personality to the point that you're acceptable enough to maybe a million people. A million random people that don't know who you are. That's what you're aiming for. So as you said, you, you've completely created this scenario where you're at the mercy of these companies that can just flick you out in a second and you have no recourse after that because they're not really tuning in for you. They're tuning in for the institution. Whereas if you go there 
and create something using your own personality. It's a take me or leave me scenario that YouTube has invented. It's always just, you're there. Yeah. And it, it, I guess it's you, kind of like ACDC or something. It's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Well, clearly ended up being a lot, but you know, like bands have always had that. It's just like, you might like it, you might not, but there it is. But in, it's in, them. It's, yeah. It's them. It, with, um, it's, you know, obviously they, they have an interchange on mainstream TV or, or, or radio. Uh, they just interchange people in and out. And when you do that on uh, on YouTube or on online, it doesn't work. If you look at, um, I can't remember his name, but he did Equals 3 uh, on, um, do you remember Equals 3? It was like a clip show. Uh, Ray William Johnson. Ray William Johnson. And then all that was getting heaps of views. And then they, out of nowhere, changed the host and then the views dropped dramatically. Like he was getting millions of views and then they just dropped to nothing because people were like, hang on, we've come here for the whole thing, not just fucking, you know, the show itself. Anyone can do the show, but they're there for the for the actual person. That's who they've bought into. Like if you post it on your YouTube channel tomorrow, um, someone else talking about the Liberal government, sure, some people would join in, but most people would be like, what's... What is this? I don't understand what's happening. Mm, mm. That drop was incredible. Mm. Particularly when it was something where it was just, you were actually talking about, con, uh, you know, like something that is separate to, it's not like some Instagram chicks product where it really is just them. That and selling makeup, right? But really it's them going to Coles. That's their product. When you're talking about something like Ray William Johnson, that is odd. You would expect that that person would be interchangeable. Mm. Like it's even interchangeable. Then not, it's interchangeable, huh? say, a, a current affair. Look at a current affair. Every night, it could be someone different. People wouldn't care. Like, I care because I like it when Tracy's on. But I, I, <laughs> I, and I do. I watch Dixon and we I, like we watch Tracy's current on. affair every night because it is, it is a comedy. It's great. It's the most unintentional yeah. comedy of all time. It's fantastic. Yeah. At the moment, yeah. it's a bit shit because they talk about the coronavirus for 15 minutes. Um, you know, Jordan, as, as someone who's involved in talk, commenting on the media and politics, um, are you watching every press conference? Because there's a lot. No, Christ, no. Because, look, what I've realised is this is the current shift. Everything is getting swept under the rug under the guise of COVID. So, for instance, the Libs just completely gutted everyone's industrial relations laws that, you know, unions had fought 150 years for, tooth and nail. People died with those laws coming into place, and they've just stripped those away like that because everyone's currently focused on COVID. So it's never ending. There's no scrutiny on anything else that's happening. Nothing else exists in the world except COVID. It's the war. It's I our modern war. I'll for the views, but like it, it, it's not going to be everything that I'm covering. So I don't really, most of the time when I learn about that stuff, it's usually someone that doesn't even work for me that's out of it saying that, I don't know, did you see the press? That, that, that's how it works for me. I'm completely out of that loop. I'm done. It's, it's just tough. like when I decided, yeah. Huh? If we, we, we sit down and, and watch it just to sort of see how, um, the pollies in New South Wales, particularly people like um, Gladys and Brad Hazard, the health minister, how they move around questions. And Josh, I don't know if you've seen this as well. I mean, you have a real job, so perhaps you haven't. You've been at work. <laughs> but the way sure. they maneuver themselves away from questions is hilarious. Like Gladys just goes, nah, not answering that, even though it's a fair question. And Brad, from all, from all accounts, Brad Hazard is a prick. Um, that's that's the way he comes off, and that's basically how I've sort of formed my opinion about him. He comes across like an absolute dick, um, and this is this the way they sit there, and and then and then your mate Bruz, who just acts like a little mouse during these press conferences, walks in, says a few words, and then obviously he's got more important things going on than a pandemic. Um, it's a strange thing to be a part of, to just be watching these people parade themselves to earn political brownie points every single fucking day, twice a day. Right. 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 Okay. And so pretty much what happens, because I've never really watched any of those things, it's kind of just like being in the royal court, is it? Where if they don't want to answer a question, they just go, no, nope, and then just <laughs> the next one, and that's the end so of So that. if I ask you a hard question... Uh, you might give me a, a half an answer, 
And then the, the reporter or the, whoever it happens to be, they go, oh, well, that's you didn't really answer the question. Can you go back and sort of cover that? And then I've, I've seen it with Gladys a couple of times. She just goes, no, nah. <laughs> I'm not answering it. And it's like, well, everyone's stuck at home. We want answers to these hard questions. And what shits me about it is there's no one standing there disagreeing or we're not privy to these conversations that may contain some sort of nuance where it's not just this is what we're doing like there's no argument there's no conversation or debate and i think that i think that's something that they're really missing out on and it could be really beneficial if people could have some sort of form of um being privy to those conversations rather than just being told this is what you're doing this is why I really enjoy watching uh, Dana White's press conferences as opposed to like any politicians. Because <laughs> if if Dana White doesn't like a question or if he doesn't like someone, he just tells them to fuck off straight just away. Goes, fuck he just you. tells them, yeah, you're a fucking idiot. Fuck off. There's none of this like dancing around or like hiding behind questions or uh, they just get told to get fucked immediately. So I kind of I like that I, approach instead. I, that's how they. That's basically how they've been handling it. And I I sit back there and I just go, mate, this is just fucking strange. Like I know, I know, Jordan. You've been critical of the handling of the pandemic. What do you What do you think the best move would have been? Would it be if their goal is zero cases, just to lock down straight away? Look, I'll tell you one thing. You look at the data globally, and it is irrefutable. Any Asian country, unless they were like one of the more westernized ones, like Japan or something like that. But anyone where there was just this really central dictatorial government that was like, if you've got COVID, we are walling you in your house. Fuck you getting food. Just like, <laughs> just, you know, welded them in. Well, they did, COVID. they did that. They did that in China. They were welding people yeah. in their houses. Yeah. But the results speak for themselves, like the, the, the quick rapid down movement of it. It's just this, the, the stats are irrefutable. When it comes to the economy, when it comes to health, both of these things, faster the better, just get it over and done with, in and out. None of this prolonged stuff, ex- the exact opposite of what Gladys Berejiklian did, which is like, uh, yeah, we're, I can't say lockdown because I've been shitting on Victoria for the last year and a half. Uh, we're going to have these... Uh, just stay at home uh, if you want. You don't have to. If you, Actually, you do have to. Oh, fuck, two weeks later. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> all right, we're just going to have another two weeks. Just that. Yeah. Endlessly. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's just it, the whole thing never said, you know, like it, when, when Dan Andrews did it, he was just like, this is going to be a long time and this is going to suck. You know, that, that was the message from the beginning. You, know, you just have to take the medicine. No one wants to be doing this mm. stuff. It's just the alternative is worse. And we're not even talking about deaths because I know that the argument always comes that you're talking about people lose suicide and, and all of that kind of stuff because of the loss of jobs. The, the, the loss of jobs, the loss of economic activity, of having that population that's kind of partially, you know, no one really knows what the fuck is going on, the results are in that is such a bigger toll on the economy than just stamping it as quickly as you can. Honestly, if I was in charge, I would have done that. I would have brought in the tanks day one, just got (laughs) drones hovering anyone that was going anywhere, just like with a spotlight on them being like, what's your purpose of leaving? And then they're just like, I'm going to Carl's and like, carry on. (laughs) (laughs) So is that... Is the purpose of that? Because I've been critical of like, I was I was critical of the lockdowns at the start. I thought like, this is not ridiculous. I understand they're trying to save people's lives, and if the end goal is to get everyone vaccinated so less people die, that makes that makes sense, right? Even though they didn't really say that for the first couple of weeks, now that they're sort of getting a roll on it, they start mentioning it. I think if you're trying to keep it to zero, which sounds tough and would be impossible if you're actually opening borders moving into the into the future perhaps over the next 5 years. If you're trying to keep it to zero then yes, hard lockdown straight away. One case, lock it down. But how many years can we keep going with this, Jordan? I mean like this is this is year Mor- 2 now and where did do Morrison we go? Did Morrison come out yesterday? Sorry mate, did Morrison right. come out yesterday and just say we just we have to learn to live with covid now? Like they've just sort of shifted tact, haven't they? And just said well, we're just going to have to live with it. Like they're never going to I think realistically they kind of know now that they're never going to get rid of it. And they've just come out and said that, well, we're just going to have to learn to live with it. Um, was, well, that, think, was that yesterday or the day before? I think they're hoping that it just becomes something like, 
like what the Spanish flu did and it mutates and sort of disappears. Hopefully it doesn't mutate in the other direction because uh, that yeah. would be very bad. If it turns into a you know a mortality rate like fucking smallpox, then we're all then we'd all hide in our houses gladly. It's like I'm not going to Coles. I will eat the a tanks rat. and the drones are coming in. Yeah, send definitely. a tank down the end of my fucking street. Take <laughs> take some Hiluxes out. I'll send a blockade because that's that's been the good thing about this whole thing. Is yes, it kills people. There's no doubt about that. There's a lot of people that say it doesn't kill people. Whatever. If you want to argue that, go for it. Um, and there's no doubt that uh, the the numbers were inflated in some parts of the whole thing, but it is a deadly virus. There's no doubting that it kills some people. Now, if it, if it was something absolutely terrifyingly awful, it would be very interesting to see how we handle it and how it would turn into sort of I don't I don't even know what would happen. But um, I think that's why people aren't aren't overly terrified of it because a lot of people I don't know about you, Bluey, or, or you, Jordan, about uh, how many people you know of who have had this virus? I think because it's not quite as widespread in Australia as it is in other parts of the world, I don't know anyone that's had it. I'm not saying I don't believe it's real. I just think that's perhaps why a lot of people are like, nah, who cares? I'll tell you what, that's definitely true. There's, I mean, obviously, just firsthand experience always changes people's opinions. We've been very lucky, as we always have with virtually anything. When you're talking about the fact that our agriculture industry, for instance, is world standard, it's not really because we have, like, much better agriculture than the rest of the world. It's just that we're an island. And so we're just sheltered from all of these pests and plagues that come in. So we've always had that. But, man... The stories that I've heard from people in London, I remember an example of one of these, uh, my friend's brother's wife, both of them got it, but she got a particularly bad case of it. She got into a cab. So she rang up the hospital and they said, we can't send any ambulances. We don't have enough. And she, she could barely breathe. So she's kind of just crawling into a cab. The cabbie's just sitting there with like, a, oh, well, I'll just put a handkerchief over. Maybe that'll protect her. <laughs> <laughs> but that's protocol. You have to do it. And yeah. so they just take her there. She goes in. The doctor says, yeah, you have a bad case. Yours isn't mild. Yours is extreme. But you're not old. So go home. Oh. This is not enough respirators or beds. And then she gets back into the cab, diagnosed with severe COVID, she has to tell the cab driver as well because, I don't know, for some reason you just have to be like, yeah, you're, you're going to get it, sorry. And then she just yeah. drives home and then just <laughs> sits in bed, like barely able to move for months. So that's what I'm saying, right? Like it's not necessarily the thing about death. I understand that the death rate is low. You, you can argue that it's like, you know, it's it's lower than, say, the Spanish flu or something. But it's, it's like that three months of someone like her, for instance, who was an, uh, you know, an important uh, pharmaceuticals expert that was supposed to be doing work on developing a vaccine. That's what she was supposed to be doing, but she was out of the picture for three months. So it's all those little interlinkages. When you allow this to spread out like that, all of those people that are like really vital that you have no idea what they do or anything like that, just like, I don't know, say something, for instance, like you'd never think about it of like a traffic controller, like the guy that sits around all day thinking about like, okay, these lights are like malfunctioning or whatever. What happens if all those guys are sick? Mm. <laughs> just <laughs> heaps of crashes. That, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what happens. <laughs> that's what you're trying to stop. Obviously, you know, as you said, she's had a bad case. There are people that have had severe cases, mild cases, no symptoms. Like it's it's one of those things like with any illness where it's like you've you got to look at, you know, how many people are getting really, really crook. And there are some people who are young and healthy who get this this thing and and their lives have changed because their, um, their lungs are scarred and they can't breathe with the same capacity they once did. Maybe that's affected their uh, athletic ability or their, their VO2 max or whatever. And then there's other people who are older people who shook it in a couple of days. You know, like it's so, mm. uh, so many different variables go into it. I think on, mm. on the topic of, of deaths and suicides, as you brought up before, 
The argument that it's causing more people to kill themselves is an interesting one. Some people um, have figures that show they haven't, and then other people have figures that show they do. Uh, but one thing I, I found was, was really interesting was a part of the Australian General Practitioners Committee or something like this. Uh, I always fuck up their name, so let's just say something like this. Um, they found that twenty there was a 25% increase at the latter end of last year of prescription prescriptions of antipsychotics, anti-anxietics, and antidepressants. So there is a cost associated with, with the mental health of people and whether or not that then turns into more people kill themselves, perhaps, because most people don't kill themselves straight away. It's usually a chronic illness. Um, I mean, some people do. I'm not trying to compete with people killing themselves quick or slowly, whatever. You do you, baby. But people... <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about with that. But people... Um, <laughs> Isaac Butterfield is extremely pro-choice. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to take yourself out, I'm not going to stop you. Don't do it. I don't think you should do it. But if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Um, you know, it's not a mandate. Although that's something Gladys might come out with. I don't know. But um, there is definitely an issue surrounding... Um, the long-term effects of people's mental health when they when they develop uh, maybe depression that lasts a long time because they're in debt or or the, you know they've lost a loved one. Or, there's so many different variables to this thing. And I I said this the other day on a podcast. I don't think we will we will be able to get a sense of how bad this virus is for another couple of decades until we can look at it in hindsight and realize what we should have done, shouldn't have done. This was bad. This was good. This was terrible. This was a mistake. We won't know for a long time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I th- yeah, I think like, and you're talking about like the cost of people's mental health too, like the lockdowns, like, mate, there's this guy, like is a mate of like, I live in a share house and this guy keeps rocking up. Obviously we're in lockdown. He keeps rocking up. I'm sort of going, mate, like you, like, you know, you're not meant to be, he lives like 20 Ks away and he keeps rocking up. And I go, mate, you know, you're not meant to be fucking doing this. Like you're going to get in a lot of trouble. And then I sort of stopped. And he lives by himself. And I go, he must be f- like, I can't imagine what that'd be like. Like I'm sort of fortunate enough. Like I'm my missus and there's a couple of other guys here. But if you live by yourself and like what that must do to people that, you know, if you already had issues with your mental health and stuff and what these lockdowns be doing to people, like it'd be fucking, it's pretty wild. Um, I don't know when, when it's going to end, but fucking. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think on a point that you said, Geordie's about, in the UK, people in Australia right now, we're not seeing anyone that's sick. But people in the UK, they got pe- everyone around them was crook catching it in the hospital, people dying every day. And then people like, fuck, all right, this is this is a full-on sort of situation. And people here are still, because the case numbers are relatively low and the death numbers are definitely low, um, where that could easily change, uh, people are still sitting there going, ah, come on. Who cares? Let's just move on. Um, but you can't. Obviously, you can't do that. The vaccine rollout obviously has been an issue every day in the press conferences, as we were talking about before. Uh, they're saying go and get your vaccine. Although I went on the other day, I'm still not eligible for Pfizer, and for another couple of days. I know Josh, you got your vaccine. I'm not sure about. I, did, I had the AstraZeneca. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right here. Yeah, I, got, I, I actually did get. I actually did get a little bit sick. I got it on the. I got it on Friday afternoon, and then I was quite achy on Saturday, like all my joints and like you know when your skin gets a bit like cold and sensitive. Yeah. And then yeah. I woke up. I woke up on like late Saturday night after I went to bed, covered in sweat, like yeah, right. drenched. Yeah. And then that felt great on Sunday, and it felt felt fine well, since. But um, it was like a, a day of discomfort. So. An Australian comedian, we all know. Uh, a tall one called Frenchie, he uh, had the Pfizer and had his second jab and was in bed for four days. So, you know, you don't know what you're gonna your reaction's going to be, but people do that as well with the flu vaccine. They have shit reactions. Sometimes you just have a bad reaction, you know. Um, anyway. Definitely true. I just, everyone that I've heard that's taken AstraZeneca has had a bad reaction. I haven't heard one that isn't. Yeah, to, to or, the point like, where they're, like, they're changing. Go this because I know that YouTube's extra sensitive about it, but I'm saying Are that they? to continue. But like, they've changed yeah, look, the name. They've changed the name of AstraZeneca in Australia, or they are changing the name because it's just too, got yeah. such a bad, just such a bad rap. Such a um, bad association. Off, off the top of my head. Well, that just really turned on its ass, didn't it? Because that was the whole point of all of these companies naming 
the vaccine after their company? Because like, is there a better branding opportunity in the universe than that? Oh, it's great. Jesus, Everyone knows that Pfizer. That a real roll of the crap dice at Casino, didn't it? That, that, that could turn out snake eyes really bad. <laughs> so AstraZeneca, oh, AstraZeneca, because <laughs> I should, AZ vaccine is being changed to Vaxeria. And their argument that, is it's it's being it's more in line with the names that they called. It's the same name they called it in European countries and Canada. And so, if their argument is, listen, if, if people are going overseas, they don't want people being asked at the border, "What's this other vaccine?" So that's their that sounds argument. too much like that sounds too much like bacteria. That's a terrible name. Vax- yeah, I don't like that at all. Yeah, vaccine. Oh, Vax- yeah, something about Syria. I got rid of the tab, but Syria something. So. Um, <laughs> Someone defends Syria, so that's that's the uh, that's the new vaccine name. Oh, fuck, that's I'll pull way, it back up. Yeah, that's so much more egregious. <laughs> yeah, awful, awful name. Why right. not just call it disease jab? It's so <laughs> it's, it's like that. <laughs> It's so. Who <laughs> comes up with these ideas? Yeah. And I swear to God, the person that did come up with that idea is, is on like five hundred grand a year, definitely. Yeah. They spend all the money oh, yeah. on obviously research and research and development and absolutely fuck all on marketing the actual jab. <laughs> it's, it's all gone on the actual jab. It's fucking terrible, terrible name. So if anyone is unfamiliar watching this with who uh, Friendly Geordies is, it's been a, a whirlwind, whirlwind of a year for you, sir. Um, it's been one of those years where obviously you've been under a lot of pressure uh, you're being currently being uh, sued by the um, deputy leader of the New South Wales government, uh, John Barillaro. Um, fucking Zoom's put. Hang on, we're doing this through Zoom. A gift from Zoom. You're running out of time. We've removed the 40 minute time limit on your group meeting. Love it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh, that's the of them. Thank you, Zoom. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Zoom, for interrupting my Good question. Um, yeah. <laughs> so nice I- of you. <laughs> I guess my question is straight off the bat, how are you doing and how are you doing with the pressure? And could you give people a bit of a rundown without going into too much detail, detail that you can't do because of the current uh, legal case? Um, Can you give us a bit of a rundown of what happened, where you are and why you're in this uh, situation and what's happening at the moment? How would I put this? I am getting sued for the same reason that virtually everyone in this country gets sued. And that is because we have the exact opposite laws of the US when it comes to defamation, where it's up to me to prove that I told the truth, as opposed to in the US where you have to go into the courts and say, this person lied about me and I can prove it. And as a result of that, because this all goes back to lords and ladies time. This is something that will just interest you to no end, Isaac. But this is the foundation of free speech in this country. You know, like this is, it was based off the premise that free speech was specifically for lords and ladies, right? That's why in this country, for instance, when it comes to something like parliamentary privilege, parliamentary privilege pretty much just means what the average US citizen has, which the average Australian citizen doesn't have. It just means that if you're in parliament, you're allowed to say whatever the fuck you want. And in fact, it's really hard for anybody else to call you out on your bullshit because you have that parliamentary privilege. That's one of the big tenements and one of the big things that's coming up in this case at the moment, which is, I am not allowed to run a defense that it's the truth, what I'm saying, because that goes up against something called parliamentary privilege, which is pretty much just, it's his free speech. He's allowed to say whatever the fuck he wants because he's a parliamentarian. Now, why is that? It's because back in the day, if you were a parliamentarian, you were most likely a lord. You were most likely part of the gentry class. So they gave themselves, this goes back to Magna Carta. In the Magna Carta, it was pretty much just everyone thinks that it was the king fighting against the rest of the country. It really wasn't. It was the gentry fighting against the king and the gentry saying, we don't have enough rights. You're not looking after us enough. But they were pretty much just saying, but fuck everyone else. (laughs) Just we want more rights. And then the king was like, oh, okay, I think I could share power with 20 other people, you know, and that's what happened there. 
So we have based our laws off of that. And that means that when it comes to free speech here, it kind of has to be created in the courts. Now, as a result of that, because normally, and I'm eternally grateful for this, that I'm in this position, because it's really humbling that people were able to do this. And I am up in a court system case where the odds are stacked against me, because if you, it doesn't matter if you tell the truth or not, what really matters is usually what happens is they just have enough money to keep it going in the courts until someone just either goes bankrupt or uh, there just comes a point where they have to sell their house. So usually people just bow out. Now, this is something that people like Clive Palmer are notoriously famous for. Someone will call them out, even like a mayor or something. They'll be correct on the issue, but because they're just like, here you go, here's a legal defamation case. I'm asking for $500,000. Withdraw what you said, apologize, or otherwise you lose your house. And that's usually how this game goes. I am very grateful for everybody that donated to me uh, because in this instance, we can just say, no, fuck you. We're going to fight this to the end. You know, like this is a case that can actually set precedence in this country for people that actually want to make comments about the people that are in charge. Because now the standard protocol for people that are in uh, positions of power, like it's exclusively within the Liberals, let's call a spade a spade. They will always just try and put, if they're even if they're incorrect, that they'll just put these slaps on them and that stops it. It's it's just a genius tactic for cunts, really. Like it's just something that cunts have exploited. And it goes to this like absurd level where they will be arguing things in court. And I'm not saying this about my case, but they'll be arguing things in court where the pretty much the just the 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 substance of the argument is hey this guy called me an asshole but i'm not an asshole in that very specific way i'm an asshole in a slightly different way defamation mm. you know where like mm. it gets to those obscene levels where i am sitting there watching these court cases and the people that are doing these, like the, the QCs are unimaginably smarter than we are. They're in, incredibly intelligent people, but they are sitting there spending, I don't know, God knows how much, 100 grand that day, 80 grand, who knows, arguing over the definition of a word in the dictionary that, that the whole day, or they'll be sitting there and they'll be arguing about how they're going to have another argument in the future. And then you get to that argument and then they go, okay, let's have another argument about how we're going to have another argument in the future. That's, that's the absurdity of the court system. It's also the beauty of it because it is kind of our last defense. It's given me a huge appreciation of the courts because, you know, man, if we didn't have those, there's just no recourse. If there is just a system where you just have people in power and then you have police, eventually those police will just get turned into their own enforcement squad. Yes. At least there's something there where there's a judge that you can go to and say, this is against the law and they can individually sit there and like, you know, it'll take two years, but they'll eventually be like, yeah, no, you've got a point, mm -hmm. you know, that's, we should be very, very grateful for that, that we do have a functioning court system, but in conclusion, that's really what's happening at the moment. Uh, in terms of how it affects me, it doesn't really affect me. It would definitely affect, because I've talked to a lot of other people that have been in this exact scenario and they just don't have the audience to back them up. So usually what happens is they'll just be like, oh, okay, we'll just chuck 200,000 at this little cunt and shut him up and that'll be the end of that. But I just turned around with a million dollars and the best defamation lawyer in the country and was just like, yeah, let's fight this to the end. And so they were just like, fuck. You know, like, and so, yeah. <laughs> you know, but you, huh? but I, I just think it's such a credit to you to stand up and to your audience uh, to stand up and, and say, no, fuck you. Because without it, it is an authoritarian mindset that these people have where it's like, no, no, we are in charge. You are nothing. And without the courts, as you said, without the power that has been invested in you by the people, you know, you wouldn't have that ability to fight it. And I think it's a fantastic, I mean, you know, obviously I do take issue with some of your audience. They fucking hate me. They hate my guts. <laughs> do they? they I, didn't, oh I didn't know this. This is so, good. Well, this so <laughs> I made good. a video. Good, right? when, what to, yeah, I want to hear this. This will be good. When um, Jordan's uh, offside of Christo, who seems like a very nice man, 
when he was arrested by the fixated persons unit, their their poor dog was nearly crushed. Their poor mother was bloody knocked over. All that thing that we that that Geordie's was probably the worst thing that could have ever have happened for the for the um for for Barilaro's side of the argument. Um, Jordan got an enormous amount of uh, views and um, uh, audience uh, to that whole to the whole situation that was going on. Uh, I made a video about it. Uh, Jordy shared it, which is very kind. Thanks, big fella. Um, and uh, and I start. I made the horrible choice to read some of the comments. Oh my god, Jordan, you like this racist? This is not on. This is. I used to like you. Now I wish I didn't. Oh my god! Uh, and I was reading it over dinner, and I was like, oh my god. What the fuck? What am I? I've given up. I'm retiring. This is absolutely disgusting. Oh, no. But, but, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, I know. I've read some of Geordie's uh, comments in the past, and you have a very unforgiving uh, audience. Anytime you step out of line, they're India immediately. Yes, they are. <laughs> well, it leads to Geordie's that. But Jude Isaac, rule number one of being an I internet fit. I know. Don't really comment. <laughs> I don't you know why I do it. Make it. You just out for days. It's like getting the fucking AstraZeneca shot. Like you just incapacitate it <laughs> for a couple of can't stop thinking about it. Like- Blood clots from reading comments. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but you have yeah, some very I honestly, honestly, what what, what I have experienced though of uh, people around me and the people that I've talked to at shows. I, it's the same thing as always. It just needs to be repeated once again. If someone has an issue, they're going to write a comment. Hmm. But the vast majority of the audience isn't that. Yeah, they just they watch your stuff. In fact, I would say that out of anyone in the country, in fact, I think I saw a stat with this. We've got the biggest crossover audience. Yeah, so it's isn't like, that strange? As always, it's that tiny little fraction. Yeah, and I'm sure that from this podcast, people who come from my channel will, will freak out that I'm talking to a crazy lefty and all that type of stuff. Whereas people yeah. just can't deal with, you know, the conversation at hand. Like listen to what they're both talking about rather than freaking out because of what you might have read about a person in the past or seen, perhaps. It's definitely true because you do see it. It's a great Jordan Peterson point where he's just saying that a lot of the times when you're reading someone's comment or they're arguing, you've heard the argument before. It's just a complete regurgitation Mm -hmm. of someone else's thoughts. And ever since he said that, I've just noticed it over and over again. It's just the same couple of points all the way down the comments line. And it's just an indication, I suppose, of having like a really inbred sphere of thinking yeah. in your yeah. group. You know, yeah. like it's if if you're only listening to a couple of sources, there's no that's that's the rigidity of it, and you kind of just need to keep reinforcing it in your head. Which is why, if you say something in this podcast, you will see it a lot. You might even look down at it in the comments and think, "Damn." I said the exact opposite of that in this podcast, the exact opposite of what they're accusing me of, and yet they'll repeat it. Hmm. So I think that, like, I, man, that used to get to me a lot. But ever since I realized that, I thought, fuck, I'm so glad that I don't think that way. I think one of the biggest keys to success in life is to sit there with this assumption in life that you don't know anything, you know? And, and then if you have that, you listen to everybody that comes into your life and you, you at least have this, it's such a hippie phrase, but just like an open mind. That I think is just one of the building blocks of having a successful life. Otherwise, you just have these thoughts that are there. Like, man, I was just watching a documentary about Africa's like overpopulation boom. And you talk to African chiefs there and you're like, everyone's having 15 kids. And that came from a time where like 10 of them would die, right? But you don't live in that universe anymore because they've like immunized most of them. So 13 of them live. So maybe you should cut it back to maybe seven kids. And they'll be like, no. This is how our ancestors did it. There's no adaptation there. Nothing. 
Yeah. It's the same reason as when you see those global cities like New York or London, like most of the big ideas that come out of the world, again, it's because they're more well-resourced and they're extremely rich areas, but it's also because, you know, anyone that's smart and lives in this country, they fuck off and go there. And so you just have all the smartest people there, all just like, that's all I'm saying. It's just like, dude, have an open mind, mm. you know, like, you should never just sit there and just regurgitate these talking points that you hear someone else saying. Yeah. And I think, but, I think the way that social media, like so many people, it's fucking so scary how many like people just get their news and information from Instagram feeds and Facebook feeds. And obviously they're designed to just reinforce, you know, you only see things that you want to see on your Instagram feed and Facebook feed anyway. So no one's getting anything outside of like, it's, they've just got the blinkers on, like everyone's just got the blinkers on and whatever your opinion is on whatever it is, you're only going to keep seeing that and hearing that. Um, and then people seem to have this really knee jerk reaction when they hear something that deviates a little bit rather than like you said, take it on board or, or take, you know, have a bit of an open mind to it. People just go, ah, oh, fuck off. Nah, fuck that. Butterfield's yeah. a racist or fucking Shanks is a lefty or like it's, it's that just kind of, it's just a knee jerk reaction to, to a different point of view. And they feel yeah. like they only need to have one or two arguments to cement their point. And on what you're saying, Jordan, you know, you see the same comment repeated over and over and over again, regurgitated from someone else's point of view. And once they have that that point of view, they only have to cement it and argue it within the within themselves once to sort of gather that information or gather that point of view every other time they come across it within their lives. So if they think one thing about one person in the comment section, they're like, no, he's a racist. I'm not listening to anything he's ever said because he made a joke about people. Or no, I'm not listening to Jordan because he likes labor. This team mentality, the religious mentality that we've had for thousands of years as human beings. You you belong to your team, your tribe, and there's no deviation between anything else because that's when you're vulnerable. I think it is. I think you're right, man. You actually, it's something Neil once talked to me about where he said that you can only work within the confines of an identity, like in, in terms of like a cultural identity. And then after that, you start running up against other people's cultural identities. And there's just that, exactly what you're talking about. Once you do that, you're out. There's just nothing there because it, it goes, you're right. Like it actually does go back to evolutionary times of like, if you can start creating this kind of dream world between you, instead of like what Neanderthals had, where they couldn't imagine abstract concepts like a God. Well, there's some evidence that they could, but obviously not to the level that we could. Right. So but the thing is that we could say, no, 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 we're all the same because we believe in that God. So let's go fuck over these Neanderthals or whatever, right? Like that's that's what gave us that little successful edge back in the day. And it's still running now. And I swear that that's what's happening there where you see people just being like, Isaac Butterfield's a racist. They've, for whatever reason, implanted in their head, I'm not a racist. And so whenever they hear the word racist, it's a trigger. Yeah. And that's the end of that. They shut off. It's an interesting thing. And I think that like when it comes to the words like racist and sexist, these have become modern day versions of communist, what communist was in the fifties. It's just like, as soon as you said the word communist in the U S anything after that, like you, 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 all your civil rights and stuff taken away in an instant because you've conjured this boogeyman. You know, and that just kind of overrides everything because you're just tapping into that little evolutionary survival tactic. But that's what I see happen with you, for instance, when I when I ever see those things happening now. I always just think if this was the 50s, they would have been accusing Isaac of that or just not being religious enough. It's just it, it ebbs and flows throughout history. Yeah, it's a it's different a, boogeyman. It's a blanket term when you don't have an argument. You're a racist, you're transphobic, you're sexist, you're ableist. There is so many of these buzzwords that people throw in when they're not they're not towing the line that they that they want to see. And and Jordan, Josh has got a um a Facebook page called the Daily Blue News. Yeah. I always forget Correct. what it's fucking yes. called. And yes. you're gonna see this as you continue to post, you'll be accused of transphobia if you comment on something to do with um, 
uh, a conversation that you're not a part of because you don't identify as a trans person. And if you talk about women, you will find that, um, you know, you will find the same thing when, when it comes to sexism. Even even Claire in one of my videos on the second channel had a lady comment and said, oh, how dare you comment about a lady's, um, what she was wearing. Us women are supposed to stand together. You, you, you're as bad as the patriarchy. And I was like, mate, come on, like, Take a little bit of time to sit back and go, not everyone's out to hurt you. You know, if someone's making a joke, they're definitely not trying to hurt you. But even if someone has an opinion, it doesn't mean they hate you or they want to see you in pain. They might just disagree with you on something tiny or something different. And you're allowed to have a conversation about that to try and work out where you stand um, where you stand together on something. Or maybe there's there's a part of it that you can work out together rather than just putting your hands over your ears and running through uh, running through life like an autistic boy at the shops. I think a fair bit yeah. of that too is like people, <laughs> like when if they call you, <laughs> sorry, just breeze over that last part. Um, great simile. The, it's a, lot of, a lot of it's virtue signaling. Like if someone calls you a racist or says you're transphobic, they're going, well, and I'm clearly not. Like I think a lot of it's that kind of mentality. Like if I attack you and call you a racist, everyone, well, I clearly can't be, can I? Because, you know, I'm calling it out. So I think, I think a lot of it's that as well. Yeah, I think you are definitely right about it. People need to constantly justify in their own minds that they're on God's side, don't they? Hmm. It's actually one of the scariest things I've ever read is that line that everyone thinks they're on God's side. Like you, you, you listen to uh, a serial killer justify them killing people. Sometimes they're just so deranged that there's no cogent argument there at all and their mind's just somewhere else. But barring that, a lot of time, if you sit there and listen to them, you think, no, yeah, fuck them. They deserve that. You know, like they, they, they've justified it in their minds to the degree that you just, you see where they got to that conclusion. Yeah. It's something that endlessly keeps me up at night, I think, is that it's just that everyone in their mind thinks that, they're, and I'm not any different, not any different except for the fact that I think that some people are like slightly less aware of the fact that they think that they're correct on everything ever. And but it's like, a lot, a, there's so many yeah. people out there that you think about, like, what are they, what do they do in their minds all day? Like Bluey works as a scaffolder, part owner of a scaffolding business, killing life, just about to buy Thanks, a new mate. ute, you're on fire. And exciting times. Exciting times. <laughs> and, you know, the blokes that you would work with, and this is a horrible stereotype, but there must no, be a lot and, of dead And probably very accurate too. There must be a lot of dead shits. There must be a lot of dead shits. And you can't imagine yeah, what knows. they think about all day. Like I, I've often said this about playing footy. Like I don't know what these other blokes would do all day. Like what do you think about? What goes through your mind? Yeah, it's fucking, you take a look at like, and scaffolding's notorious. It's, it's kind of, I think it goes, it's kind of like, I feel like the, the trades are kind of tiered. Like if you were, if you were to look at the trades, you've kind of got like, and again, sorry to anyone that's a concrete or a bricklayer, but I, I feel like it's concreters and bricklayers. I think I we're just above them, but we're still I like, obviously your sparkies and your diesel fitters and stuff are up the top, but mate, you, you're hundred percent right. So, some of the guys that come onto the sites that I work at, I just go, holy fuck, mate. What does your, what does your house look like? I always wonder what their house looks like. I go like, <laughs> what you, what? like just go like fucking hell. Like it's, you know, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's colorful. I don't think there would be any scaffolders or concreters listening to this to be brutally honest. <laughs> and if there is, if there is, you're not welcome. So this is high above your, uh, <laughs> your ability to think. So <laughs> The following section of this podcast was removed due to legal reasons. But stick around. It's a bloody good chat with old Geordies. He seems like a nice fellow. I realise I sound like the guy at the start of a movie who says the following film contains sexual references, coarse language and severe nudity. Unfortunately, this conversation and this podcast doesn't contain any nudity. I'm sure you're all very upset. Anyway, back to our celebrously, I don't even know if that's an actual word, but anyway, celebrously intellectual conversation with three extremely intelligent individuals. The powers that are passed pass to police and politicians right now during this pandemic with lockdown, stay at home orders, you got to do this, you got to do that. I wonder what could happen if 
20 years' time, if they're still available for the people in charge to use, how they could use them against people, anyone, any any single citizen, if they wanted to, if it's there. That worries well, me. And it should. And it should. Because you're exactly right. That's what they've done with this pandemic. It's not just in the legal system. It's economics. It's an old philosophy of never let a pandemic, or never let a crisis go to waste. Mm. But it really depends who's making the decisions because some nations across the planet have come out of COVID stronger. They've had huge amounts of money, money injected into their economy and that's just made like a huge infrastructure boom. And that's usually what you always see is what always spurts economic growth. And then you have countries like Australia where they use that as an opportunity to shift hundreds of billions of dollars into the richest corporations in the country and globally, making the average citizen poorer and under this guise, getting rid of your workers' rights and getting rid of your basic freedoms. All in the name of this is a pandemic, we have to solve this. Now, that it's might be true food. at that point, but everything underneath that isn't scrutinised. Where yeah, do you I both see this going? Where do you well, where do you see this ending? Like, do I don't you see, see this like, as right now is like they're doing it to try and you know take people's livelihoods away, but it's how people manipulate the laws in the future. Um, sorry, Josh, I cut you off. Sorry, mate. No, I was just I'd be interested to hear from both of you is like where where you see this ending. Like I know, like you said, like there's all these new powers and like the QR codes and and all that stuff. Like, do you see it? Do you see it ending, or is this just? Do you reckon this is just what it is now? This is well, just people sort love of the new people normal. love the the new normal uh, as a quote to use when they talk about anything with this, and I, I think eventually it'll sort of minimise, but of you know there'll still be scars from it. I think this will go for another decade. I think this will be our um, you know the the two thousands was all about nine eleven and the war, and and this is our version of that. This is what everything will be based off. What to what extent? I've got no idea. Um, as for the vaccine, it looks like it's helping people not die. That's a good thing. Um, whether or not you need booster shots, whether or not you need them every six months, that's an interesting one. It's certainly a good time to invest in companies that are dealing out these shots because it looks like they're going to be busy. Um, as for what happens with the virus, does it mutate? Does it become less infectious? Does it become more infectious? Does it become more deadly? Does it become less deadly? Who knows? Um, was it invented by the Chinese to oust Trump? Probably. Um, but like, there's a lot of different <laughs> things you've got to think about. I don't know. Maybe that's just a bit too um, coincidental for my for my liking. Um, but you know, people love it. Some people are just hardcore into it. They love this virus. They're like, yes, we're locked down again, and it's it's weird. And other people are just so anti everything to do with vaccines and the virus does it exist and i just think as with everything else the truth lies somewhere in the middle and you're gonna have to find uh some sort of way to i don't know i think you gotta you're gonna have to live with it unless we find a way to bring virtual reality into the world and we can live our lives in our bedrooms and just get heaps fucking fat that sounds good yeah yeah what do you think jordan I don't know because I never really look into the future like that. I don't because mm. it's just so unpredictable. There's so many variables of what's going to happen, like like all those graph structures, right? Like it's just the same thing. They just I remember in the global financial crisis they were saying, "Yeah, we're going to be seeing five percent growth for the next decade," and then the global financial crisis came, and then it was negative one. Right? It's no one knew. I think that that's the same, but you're probably right. You, if, if you really were thinking about it, well, naturally, surely the virus would keep just uh, transmuting and turning into something else. I don't know. I really don't know. From what I know. know about viruses, which is very fucking little, they, want to, they don't want to kill the host because then they can't spread. So that's why you see this trend Oh, fucking listen to me. What a fucking idiot. That's why you see this trend of <laughs> virus. <laughs> Allegedly, you see this trend of viruses becoming less deadly as far as like widespreading ones because they want to be able to spread more and be more infectious. But if you kill the host, they don't travel as much. If you know uh, what I mean. 
Okay. Look, again, when it comes to like uh, anything remotely medical, I've got no yeah. real understanding of it at all. Like, you know, I'll read like experts and things that are talking about it. But yeah, you, you, you'd you have to say that something that's this big, even if you were able to solve that, the implications for it for society, as you said, yeah. like those will be felt on forever. That's kind of a, it's a change moment. And then on top of that, you know, increased bushfires, it's, it's going to be, you're right, like it's going to be a completely different society. I think at the very least that'll be the case that, as you said, right, that new normal thing, I don't think we're going back. So also on top of that, I mean, let's, let's have a look at something else I don't know anything about, and that's the history of the 20s and the Spanish flu, there would have been people 10 years, 20 years after that where they remember the flu and what changed because of that. So what's to say that um, someone who's had to go home and work or whatever or they've been laid off their job or lost their job, what's to say that somebody doesn't come up with a, a new piece of technology or a new way for people to live their lives and in 40 years' time, that's how we're all living and the reason for that is because old mate lost his job and spent his his time as a qualified engineer to do this new particular thing or or whatever it happens to be and that's the, that changes the course of history because that's how they reacted in this situation and now everyone lives this new normal which is the normal uh you know the normal way anyone or any society changes it changes over time we've just had to adapt very quickly uh, this new normal everyone talks about, maybe that would happen over 60 years and this has happened over two. Everyone's living inside. Uh, maybe there's a new way that people live their lives and this is the moment that we all look back on in 50 years' time as that's what changed and now it set us on this whole new course of history. Maybe it's a better history, maybe it's worse, but we've adapted as human beings often do uh, to live in our environment the best way we can. You know, it's not wrong. It's definitely not wrong. The, 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 the enemy of everything, I think even on an individual to societal level, is complacency when you kind of just have the same thing happening over and over and over again. Someone will outcompete you. And so it's kind of on, on, on yourself to kind of just impose those conditions when it comes to you so that you're kind of forced to grow. But... Yeah, I think that that's exactly what happens on a societal level every time. The, the amount of uh, ingenuity that happened after, say, World War One or mm. World War Two. Yeah, it was because of those earth-shattering moments where everybody had to think ingenuitively just to survive. You're right. Otherwise, why would you? Like, if everything else was just exactly the same as it is now, for instance, you probably wouldn't be podcasting as much as you were. You wouldn't be changing around what you're doing and presenting more. And it wouldn't be for the better, I suppose, because you'd just be doing, you wouldn't, you'd just be doing stand-up shows across the country. It's changed your life. And that's happened to everybody. So, yeah, somebody who's extremely smart will come up with, and that's what's happened now. This is a point that I'm always trying to say on my self-help channel, like, yeah, okay, there are a lot of people that have been taken out of jobs. Yes, there is things that the government definitely could have done to have prevented that, definitely. Like, it's just not a statistical thing that you couldn't argue. Having said that, there are a lot of people in the pandemic that have come up with multi-billion dollar companies like that. Yeah. For instance, who the fuck had heard of Zoom yeah. before this? You, know, you know what? Know? I, was, I was listening to... Uh, uh, what was it? There's a guy, I'm pretty sure he's a sleep expert called Matthew Walker. And he has yeah. a book that I have. I haven't got to it yet. I think it's the third or fourth next book I'm going to read. Anyway, he was on Joe Rogan's podcast five years ago, four years ago. And so I listened to it at the gym. And one of Joe's first uh, advertisements that he does at the start was Zoom. And I'd never <laughs> heard of it before. And he was like, he was advertising Zoom. He's like, got to check out Zoom. It's a great way to host meetings, yada, 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 yada. And then you look now or a year ago, 12 months ago, out of nowhere, it would seem, Zoom becomes the biggest thing that everyone's using. Their stock grew like astronomically, like like 3,000% or something insane in the 12 months after the pandemic, like ridiculous. Because they were there. They were ready. 
Like they had all the infrastructure in place, the planning, the business model, and whoever decided, society seemed to decide that that's the product they were going to use. I guess I you're so. right. Like, yeah, it's it's the preparedness meeting that change. Otherwise, it'd just be Skype. But what is Skype now? Skype's just MSN. No, no one no. uses Skype. No, MSN some, Messenger. Some losers yeah. try to use Google Hangouts. Leave me alone. All right, Zoom's easy. I know how to find <laughs> the, the copy, the invitation, and send it to people. That's all I need to know. So yes, yeah, it it, it was ready. It was ready to go, and. I mean, there was other companies that definitely benefited from it. Look at Afterpay. Their stock went, it dropped dramatically. I think I I bought Afterpay stock at $35 and sold at $70 or $85 because like it's not going to go up any further. It's currently sitting at about $140. And it just, <laughs> it was crazy. I, I, I couldn't believe it. It was one of the fastest growing stocks uh, that I've ever seen coming from someone who's been involved in, um, the stock market for at least six and a half months, and so it was. <laughs> that's, that's true. Um, but you know, for me personally, I had the opportunity of either laying down, going fuck. You know, my career is ruined because I can't go to stand do stand up, and I can't make money. And it's a, it's a great money maker to do stand up, but I used the capital that I had to invest in merch. And sold a lot of merch, and that was that's now a part of my business. Something that I didn't consider before, and without the pandemic, wouldn't have done, wouldn't have utilized. Um, mm. Little things mm. like, you know, we were supposed to be on tour the day that uh, Claire and I found our house that we bought. Without the pandemic, we wouldn't have bought it. All these things that you know, the whole thing about you know, it's not what happens to you in life; it's how you react. And a lot of people aren't in my situation, and I get that. A lot of people can't go to work and they can't pay their bills. And people in Sydney that were in lockdown, they weren't getting any government assistance. Some of the government assistance they were getting was disgusting, 650 bucks a week. My old house, that wasn't a crazy house. It was just like a four-bedroom house. Was I think it was 590 a week rent. So you're left over with 60 bucks, which is fuck all if you've got a family. People, You look at people in America, they weren't even getting handouts. They weren't even getting government assistance. No wonder they were at war with each other. Like right now, there's fucking people in the street from Antifa shooting at the Proud Boys. Like it's crazy, and people. That's what happens when people are in bad positions. Have their back up against the wall. They start to panic and they start to fight back. Some people can thrive. Others can crumble. I guess it's the same with getting sick or not getting sick. Survival of the fittest, and we don't know whether or not you're fit enough or you are in a fit position to fight this virus. Long story short, we're all fucked. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I like how that all started with I, I have six months experience in the stock market Max <laughs> Real fucking wheeler dealer I love it Yes Isaac do you have the classic Australian investment of Qantas No <laughs> No <laughs> No. Well, what got, the hell? What? So you're not from Gen X. Is that what you, you're telling? You hate no. Australia. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no. uh, I've Terrorist. Never, I've never even <laughs> flown Qantas. I'm a Jetstar boy. Richard Branson for life. Um, that or uh, Rex. Uh, or Rex Airlines. That was another one Rex. that grew over there. Yeah, you, you have to say yes to Rex, don't you? Dude, I flew Rex. Rex. I flew Rex from Sydney Airport to... Uh, Broken Hill. Not only was it fucking four hours late. Good on your ex. I hope I tank your stock. Um, you could have driven. It was, it was four. No, it was fucking eight hours. They were four <laughs> hours late, and um, I see what you mean. Yeah, I could have driven in that time. Well done. Yeah, sorry, in, in I, sorry, yeah, I abused yeah. you. Um, <laughs> and then I was uh, sitting in the lounge, and uh, we're talking to a flight attendant or someone who's involved in the company, and they said, "Oh." What? About a year ago, we flew out to Broken Hill and the fucking propeller fell off. Um, the prop propeller on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. And I looked it up. And yeah, there's a story of this fucking big spinning prop propeller falling off this light aircraft and falling on some, prick, some prick's farm out in the middle of nowhere across outback New South Wales. So when you walk out to one of these planes, the captain oh, is standing next to the wing. And I say, being a fucking smartass, you sure she's on tight? 
And he looked at me and goes, there's one dickhead on every flight. I was like, fuck off, mate. <laughs> Tighten the yeah. bolts. Don't have a go at me. <laughs> How dare you? That, that's fucking poor from the staff. Don't tell the passengers that story. That's, no. Don't tell them that. Why would you that's bring awful. that up? No, if you fly Rex, you get what you give him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you just, deserve nothing. You deserve abuse. <laughs> Isn't that part of the ticket for them? Yeah. Like, what it are you getting t- out of that? That's one of those ones, right, where it's like, you want tea? Yes, please. $15. Ah, well, oh. fuck. Here we go. And it tastes like- <laughs> that what there's, there's a restaurant in America, and their whole shtick is they abuse you throughout the meal. Have you seen that? Mm. And uh, basically, you walk like in, fun. and they go, get out, you fat fuck. Where do you want to sit? <laughs> That's what yeah. Rex is. That's what Rex is like. That's like <laughs> we'll be landing in 20 minutes, you idiots. Strap yourselves in because we're going down. <laughs> no, it's love such Rex. A good name, Always fly Rex. Rex is way more Aussie than Qantas. Now that 100%. I think about it. Mate, I will only fly Aussie Rex. Huh? Rex, is the name of a, Rex is the name of a bad dog. Like Rex. No, a good yeah. dog. dog. And Rex, yeah. Rex, Rex is a dog that Rex shits inside. Hunt. Holy hell. Why don't they have Rex Hunt doing their fucking um, their tourism commercials? Just kissing the flight attendants and then letting them off. Yes. That would be beautiful. <laughs> yes. Rex Hunt. Nah, I'm only flying Rex <sighs> from now on. I love him. This yeah, podcast you know what? will be brought to you by Rex. Of that. Like, it's just like uh, Jetstar is in that uncanny valley of just like, oh, couldn't you just put in a little more effort? Just a little bit. Just two but mil red, on the I seats. I like that fact that it's just like, yeah, the propeller fell off. So, <laughs> shut up. What do you it? expect? You got two of them. Yeah. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's what she said. I said, did you crash? She goes, no, nah, there's another one. I was like, yeah, car's got four wheels. Like, what yeah, are you talking Isaac, about? Isaac, you idiot. Jesus. Like, I can't <laughs> That that was the response. Stick to stocks, champion. (laughs) (laughs) We'll we'll look after the planes. You worry about the stocks, bud. (laughs) I haven't flown Rex in a while, but I'll be back. I haven't. I haven't counted them out yet. But um, so obviously, really, you know what, Isaac? You should be the sponsor of Rex. Screw Rex Hunt. I should at least the Rex app. You should take over. I should do like yeah. the pre pre fight safety announcements. G'day, you good motherfuckers! <laughs> Make good. sure you strap yourselves in. This is going to be a great ride. That'd actually be really good, wouldn't it? And it, and all the people that would fly wrecks from outback New South Wales, my type of people—they're all racists, rednecks. It's perfect. Rednecks. Ed Kelly yeah. lovers. Perfect. Yeah. That's funny. There's something in that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, well, Jordan, um, unless you've got anything else to bring up in this uh, delightful conversation, I need to go to do a wee. So, um, yeah, I'm busting. I'm glad you said that. I'm about to piss myself. You know what? I've been thinking the same thing for the last 20 minutes. I'm just like, look, I'm enjoying this a lot, guys. <laughs> oh, damn, I wish I brought a jar with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is how the Amazon workers feel that uh, Jeff Bezos <laughs> makes pissing the uh, pissing bottles while they're on their shift. I feel the same. I feel. I know, I know. I've got adult nappies in the other room for a gag. I'm wearing that the next time I'm on Isaac. <laughs> well, we want to we want to get you on um, in the studio when it's built. the The wood will be here next week for all of you who've been paying attention. Very exciting. So that's going to We've be all wood. set up. We've got wood. We've got a beautiful custom desk coming. That's going to be wow. sick. And um, it's. I've got this fucking, you know what? I'll break it out for you. No one's seen this. Uh, Shanks, uh, Bluey, talk amongst yourselves while I go and get this item. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm, I'm sorry. That's, this no. is reason enough to go and get. Gee, so what, much of a sizzle. What's he? He's gone. What's he? Where's he going? What's the magic um, item? It's, be, it's better be good. He's talked it up. Uh, Jordan, have you had um have you had the jab yet? Are you, have you had have you had your first dose or no? I was waiting for Pfizer and then I just heard that Frenchie was out for four days and I was like, well, that's twice as long as AstraZeneca. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> How can that be worse? How can Pfizer be worse? Fuck. I don't know. I don't know enough. I nah. It's just something that's I don't know, like. Holy fuck. I'm just Sorry. so not look, interested look in what he's got. Not interested in. What? <gasps> <laughs> Holy fuck. This is a buffalo's that- head from the Northern Territory. That's incredible. Fucking wow. hell, that's huge. 
it just looks like a giant version of that Southern gentleman bow tie that they have when you've got that <laughs> white suit. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Giant so, tie for a giant man. So that will be on the uh, on the wall, and that was uh, gifted to me by Adam Greentree, who's uh, the greatest bow hunter to ever come out of Australia, and uh, it's from the Northern Territory. Bring it back from there, and uh, it's a beautiful big water buffalo. The only other person that has one of his buffalo heads is the great Uncle Joe Rogan. So there'll be a fucking... I'm closer to me boyfriend. That's very cool. That's very cool. Man That's very, very cool. You How was that shipped to you? How was that shipped to you? He gave it to me. He lives He lives yeah. in Newcastle. Oh, cool. Okay, well, that makes sense then. What? <laughs> That's that so cool. such a strange connection. Yeah, it was look, weird. I, look, I, I commend it entirely, but isn't that uncanny? So That is amazing. Everyone Adam and I... Adam was on Joe's podcast maybe three years ago, and then I found out he was from Newcastle. He was just talking. He goes, yeah, where I live in Merriweather. And I was like, that's fucking right next to my house. And so um, that was before I sort of had any followers or anything like that. And then when I started to make a few videos that, get, that got views, um, his wife, Kim, reached out, and I said, oh, yeah, cool. Nice to, nice to talk to you. By the way, I'm in love with your husband. And she said, um, <laughs> "Why don't we have? Why don't we have all have breakfast tomorrow?" And then I went and had breakfast with them, and they've been, you know, great mates of Claire and mine for for like three years now. They're coming to our wedding and all that type of stuff. It's been we've we've developed a really good friendship out of it. So that's just from some random, you know, association between a podcast that he was on and and one that I enjoy. And uh, now I've got a big fucking dead animal in my house that he shot. It's great. That's so cool. It is remarkable, I got to say. It's so cool as well that the uh, the modern day equivalent of Crocodile Dundee lives in the burbs of Newcastle, and that's, that's exactly where he should live as well. Yeah, dude. <laughs> he, Fucking, he's got that's hilarious. Some of his stories about there's one story he's got where he was uh, stalked by this giant mother grizzly bear in the back country of, uh, of America. And the way he tells the story is amazing, but to give it away, he, there's this photo of him. He took on his phone of him with this pistol pointed at this bear. And then after he gets back to the town, it ends up leaving him alone. He finds out that the pistol was jammed the whole time. The dude sold him the wrong ammo and it wouldn't have fired if the fucking thing charged at him. There's another story he's got about being stranded in New Zealand on this mountaintop trying to get this helicopter to find a place to land so he could be saved and it couldn't find him. It kept going in different directions. He's run out of food. He falls off a glacier, breaks his fucking arm, this whole thing. He's a fucking madman. He has got more testosterone in his body than... Anyone I've ever met, it is just like like lovely dude, like very polite, nice, softly spoken, doesn't drink, um, extremely respectful, all that type of stuff, and just just a crazy, crazy person, more of a man than I could ever hope to be. Aren't you always jealous when you hear people like that lives? As as opposed to like our lives, for instance, Isaac, where yeah. it's just like, yeah, okay, I jumped out of a helicopter, yeah, skied down a mountain to survival. Uh, what did you do today? Well, I read news.com and I read an article. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have a, I, have a, I have a good mate that's in the uh, in the special forces in Western Australia, and I only see him kind of once every couple of years, but it's the exact same, Jordan. Like I'll say, he was, oh, how have you been, Josh? And I'm like, yeah, good, mate. Like bit of scaffolding here. How are you, mate? He goes, yeah, good. Uh, did a lock picking course the other day and uh, abseiled down the side of a building and uh, did, they did like advanced driving courses and uh, how to pull guns. It's just like, you know, jumping out of planes and yeah, it's, and yeah, I'm here. Uh, yeah. Podcasting with you guys, which is interesting, but no one is. It's weird. Yeah, it's people. just not the same, is it? No, it's a different no. life. It's a different life. No. Yeah. And it's, I don't know. It actually does make me feel a lot of the times of I've really wasted my life. Like in the, in the, in the era now that we live in, <laughs> where so bleak. much is available to you, and the scariest thing you've ever done in your life is take a Rex flight. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you, you are getting. You, you, are, you are being up you, there in terms of risk, <laughs> is. but it was one day. <laughs> you are being. You are that's pretty scary. The situation you're in, mate. You are being sued by the deputy premier. That's that's pretty scary. But again, Dude. don't you reckon it's like. 
the 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 real threat is just sitting uh, listening to two uber nerds talk for <laughs> like eight hours about the definition of con man it's not yeah. Yeah, it's a different kind of scam. <laughs> yeah, it's not getting your hand caught between two rocks and having to cut it off. Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to just. Um, I want to show you this. We're talking about scary things that have happened to us. I I've always been a big sook and a big pussy with a lot a lot of different things, but I I was on tour and I was up in where was I somewhere. Um, <laughs> Some disgusting area. I think it was Airlie Beach. I was. I was in Airlie Beach. <laughs> it's actually quite Shit nice old. up there. Um, anyway, I'm just um, I'm just pulling it up on the on the screen here, and then I'll let everybody wee. Um, if I can find the fucking Zoom thing, I've got to share this. Hang on, just everyone bear with me. Everyone breathe. Um, so basically, this dude messages me out of nowhere, and I go, yeah. He goes, I've got a Russian plane. And I want to take you up in the Russian plane and I want to um, do some acrobat skills with you. And I was like, and I'd normally always just say, no fucking way. But this time I said, let's do it. And it was, this is me here. <laughs> so this is just. Holy hell. Yeah. It's like one of those characters in like Porco Rosso. <laughs> <laughs> This is me here, and this is um, it's off my phone and screen recorded, so it's a bit um, like you skip forward and shit, and um, I can hear it. So the um, basically what happens is we take off, and he's doing about right here. He's doing about um, forty kilometers an hour for takeoff, maybe eighty or something like that, whatever it is. Anyway, we go from about ten feet off the ground to about I don't know almost 500 meters off the ground in a couple of seconds. And the G forces that hit me are insane. You'll see me look down and my head gets stuck down. That's how hard (laughs) these G forces hit me. It was terrifying. So we take off. He was scooting along. I'm waving to people going, Hey, look at me go. Absolutely killing it. And then he just fucking hooks it. Ready? I like your shirt. Thanks, bro. And so we're up here and then he just goes fucking. Ooshka. Right here. And we're up. And I was like, <laughs> holy fucking shit. It was horrible. And so anyway, we scoot along. He comes in here and we're going into the bay. And he's traveling at 400 kilometers an hour. And he says, what we're going to do is we're going to come into this bay and we're going to take a sharp right-hand turn. I'm like, oh, I'd prefer we didn't. But all right, let's do it. So we're coming in here. You can see bottom of the screen. And he just hooks in. And, and I'm at this point, I'm trying to stay conscious. See how I'm breathing there? I'm like, fuck. Yeah. He's doing this. And I'm sort of, you know, I know it looks like I'm having a good time here. But this is the worst time of my life. Anyway, so we're hooking along like that. And then... um. If we where can we go here? So he starts doing these, and we're going upside down. And I hate heights. I would not even fly until I was about twenty two. Fuck, um, that's wild. It was cool looking back on it now. But he said to me, mate, you know what? You'll get out of this plane, and you'll go. That's the best thing I've ever done. And I think it was at this point that I just thought, this is the worst thing that I've ever done. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Look, I'm fucking upside down. What the why? Is that a Rex plane? Scary. Your neck looks like a piece of noodle. It just goes like. <laughs> it's, and the G forces are just insane. He's doing it again, and this is the last one. I said, mate, unless you want me to spew in your fucking plane, stop. This is a Russian plane from the eighties, and it was just fucking horrific, absolutely horrific. Um, and then he goes, oh, do you want to open up the fucking door at the top? And I go, well, not really. Did you? <laughs> I no. Don't. <laughs> I was like, I don't really want to do that. Please don't make me do that. Yeah, and no. um, so then we uh, we come into land, and I, I'm acting all cool and calm. Um, but it was the beard looks nice. Uh, but it was, um, yeah, it was just <laughs> one of those things where you just go. I got out, and I was like, never again. That was yeah, yeah full of shit. Uh, <laughs> that was it was fucking terrifying. Um, but so it's pretty much just like being on a roller coaster that doesn't have a predetermined destination. It's that same feeling of just instant queasiness, is it? You had, it was weird. I've never, because I hate roller coasters, so I've never been on one. 
And so uh-huh. he was just the the change of direction and the amount of G forces that we felt. Um, like you could look at the the dashboard. That's why I was looking down at the start when he took off. I was looking down, and it's all in Russian, so I don't know what the fuck it said. Um, <laughs> but it uh, it's got like sort of like a G force counter, and we hit four once, and all this type of stuff, or five, or whatever it was. Um, and I think it increases the atmospheric pressure by, like, is it a thousand each? I don't know, whatever it is, or a hundred. Um, and literally, your head feels like it's it weighs some crazy amount. So if it weighs, you know, 50 kilos or 50 fucking kilos, you dumb cunt, uh, 18 kilos or whatever it is, then it must feel like it weighs 180 and you're just like trying to hold on to it. You're, you're bringing your traps involved and you're trying to hold it and stay conscious. And it was one of those experiences that I'll never forget, but I never want to do again, ever. No, thanks. You know what? After looking at that footage, fair enough. I really didn't like seeing your neck do that. It, was, it looked like it didn't have any bones. I it hate that a, kind of stuff. It huh? gave me a whole new sense of respect. Not that I never like didn't respect fighter pilots, but the 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 ability that they have to number one stay alive during that, but also remain conscious and make split second decisions is just unfathomable for someone like me who'd went through that. Just crazy. Um, but, yeah, I wouldn't do it again. I got off and old mate was like, well, how was that the best thing you've ever done? I was like, no, not even close. Not even <laughs> fucking close. That sucked. Get me on a Rex plane, stat. Oh, mate. Like, we had turbulence flying up to Brisbane a couple of months ago. And now, like, I was terrified of planes for a long time. Now, any turbulence, I'm just like, Bring it at me, baby. I'm ready. This thing ain't coming down. I don't care if there's a big bump. I've seen it all. I've been through it. It's all G. Don't even worry about it. Anyway. <laughs> right, so gentlemen. before you're smoking cigarettes, now you're smoking cigars. Fuck that. So same <laughs> Yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know that. That's I've had really lung cancer. Good. I've beat it. Give me a durry. Let's, and space it let's go. That's what I'm ready. Let it's me take amazing it on. that instead of that once in a lifetime experience, you would have traded it for watching a current affair that night. <laughs> so that's that's the thing. Like people are like, man, you're this comedian. You do shows, all this type of stuff. I love being at home and just watching a current affair, and then picking like one TV show to watch the entire season of, and then like twelve months later watch it again. That's the type of freak I am. I prefer to be at home just walking me dogs, but I do like doing shows as well, and I would like to go back to doing that. But as we said earlier, that won't happen for another decade. Ladies and gentlemen, these boys need to do wee-wees. We all need to go and urinate. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, young Bluey for joining us again. And uh, Geordies, thank you very much for your time, man. I pre- I know you're very busy. Uh, you're, a, you're a good person. I, I thoroughly enjoy your channel. If you haven't watched uh, Friendly Geordie's channel, go and check it out. Uh, go and check him out on the gram. And uh, where else are you? Twitter, Instagrams. You're very active on Twitter, Instagrams. Probably Facebook. No, not Facebook. Probably. No. Probably. I don't know. Get around him. He's a good person, good yeah. bloke, fighting for what's right in the country and um, he's someone I've got a, 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 certainly a lot of time for and a lot of respect for in what we do. He is the educated version, a non-version of me, a non-bearded version of me, I'd like to think. <laughs> One who actually knows what he's talking about Such and an not just regurgitating right. facts. Yeah. Anyway. Why do um, tolerate a five o'clock shadow? You should Maybe. grow a beard. I saw you today with um, facial hair. Why don't you grow a beard? Can't do it. Can't believe do it. Believe in yourself. I, I no, if, look, I, I believe in myself. <laughs> I just don't like looking like I'm from the Middle Ages. Like it, it suits you though. <laughs> it definitely does with you. <laughs> look at that. How weird. Does don't that you think? Look? Like how much would? How much does it more suit Isaac Butterfield getting on stage and instead of having a shirt that says moist, just having chainmail? <laughs> and a huge sword. Yeah. yeah, why not? Fuck it. Or a massive <laughs> axe that takes two hands to wield. Like, in fact, that I, would be more so. <laughs> I think I might. I may well get to go alongside that giant um, fucking animal head. I might get one of those big two-handed axes to put on the wall as well. Yeah, the one why that's not? got a blade on both sides. Why That'd not? be awesome. Yeah, right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, go and check out the pod. Well, you're already here if you've already watched this part of the podcast. Good. Stick around. We're very good. Goodbye. <laughs>